Ooh, what's happening? We're live. What's up, World Wrestling Live, Ward Wrestling Live, the Wrestling Nation, everybody out there. We've got two Loris College, Iowa studs. Just graduated. Uh, so the guy with the beard, that's Guy Patron Jr. Uh, he went to Jesuit High School in Louisiana, where he was a state champ and a two-time runner-up. At Loris, he was a four-time All-American, 21 and Noah's senior year. And then the one that has no beard, that's my man, Matt Randone. Uh, he went to Assumption Catholic High School, where he, too, was a state champion in Iowa. Uh, he wrestled at Loris. While these guys were at Loris, they were the number one rated D3 school in college wrestling while they were there. And it was just because of these two. <laughs> one of the big wins he's had while he was in college was the Cliff Keen International. Kicked ass there, number one. And uh, we got him on here today. So what's up, Matt and Guy? How are you guys? Great. I'm excited. Pretty good. Cool, man. Sorry, I, I kind of got that all out. I hope everybody understood like I was trying to get through it. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Guy Patron was a surprise landing. So that was pretty cool. Get a four-time All-American on here. Now, when you, I was trying to understand on the D3 level, when you, if you went 21-0 and won some shit, and then it said national tournament. If you're in D3, do you go to the NCAAs? Or do you have to win at the D3 level and then you can qualify? Um, so you have to qualify for your regional, which, which is still NCAAs. Um, and top three in each regional go to nationals for it's just like the division three nationals. Nice. Cool. I was just trying to, I figured that was what it was. Because mm -hmm. didn't they, years ago, if you won the D2 or D3 NCAA, didn't you go to the NCAAs? Yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was a while ago. You got like an uh, automatic bid to the tournament. Yeah, because I saw somebody writing about that, like they should bring it back. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a fun tournament then. How cool would that be for like a D three guy to advance there and then just whoop ass? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely could happen. Hey, you got to wrestle, right? It's like right. Anything, you got to play the game. Mm -hmm. and, yep. uh, anything can happen. How many people have walked into that tournament and everyone was like, "He's just gonna blow his way through it." Yeah, going to happen, right? Right. Well, first of all, I wanted to ask you, obviously, uh, and, and I've talked to a lot of people that are up where you guys are. Uh, for those who don't know, Loris College is in Dubuque, Iowa. So they are in Iowa. But um, everyone I've been talking to in Iowa said that um, you guys had opened back up pretty quickly because of, it's so spread out there. The cases weren't as high as uh, some of the other, other places. Are, are you guys back open, function at, at some sort okay. of again or are you guys still locked down um as far as our wrestling room we can't get in there still um they actually just passed something i believe yesterday that was uh, making it mandatory for masks everywhere now so um yeah it's still kind of just a rocky situation we really don't know where, what's going to happen or, or anything like that and i just read something on twitter the other day that they um were canceling d2 wrestling nationals already so um hopefully i mean if that doesn't happen to d3 or uh, hopefully D2 gets their season back, but yeah, it's pretty rocky still. So we don't really don't know. Yeah. And you guys just, um, you guys just graduated, but is that the end of, of your wrestling career? Did you guys have plans for the off season? And, and if so, how did COVID kind of affect your, your next steps in life? I, I guess. Um, I mean, for me, I, I do plan on going on to wrestle to the next level, um, which would be trying to make a world team and then hopefully eventually an Olympic team uh, for Greco. Uh, but COVID kind of canceled all of the tournaments uh, to qualify for the Olympic trials. So it kind of put everything in a bubble, but they, uh, I think they ended up pushing the Olympics back a year. So, that, I mean, that helps out just to have more chances to qualify, but, I don't know when they're going to be having those tournaments yet. Yeah, well, hopefully, um, you know, we get to the other side of this and it happens. What about you, Matt? Um, I didn't have really have plans to wrestle 
uh, after this year, but I am going to start coaching. I'm coaching at Loris next year, actually. I'm going to be a lightweight coach here. Um, and then I'm also going to help out with, we have a kids club um, called DWC. So I'll be helping out with that as well. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Cool. Get, get into coaching. And um, well, you, I, I don't, you just got your bachelor's or your master's? My bachelor's. So will you work on your master's while you coach or are you just going to focus on coaching right now? I think just just coaching, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm a little over school at this point. But, uh, but yeah, I'll just be focusing on coaching mainly. Cool. Well, good for you. And, and, and that'll be interesting because um, you're going from the experience to now the observation part of it. Yeah, and, absolutely. It's, it's definitely going to be hard. And I know um, our coaches now are just like, you have to get out of like the wrestler mindset, basically. It's like you, you're, you're working out for other people now, not for yourself. So. Well, and your buddies are still in the room, right? I'm sure you Absolutely. still. Have so, um, they got to adjust to now you being the coach and not, not going. <laughs> right. so, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's cool. So, um, Louisiana youth wrestling, Iowa youth wrestling. Um, we obviously know what what comes out of Iowa. Um, I haven't really spoken to anybody from Louisiana yet and, and talked to Louisiana wrestling. Uh, what is Louisiana wrestling? How good is it? Uh, you're obviously great, four-time All-American. And uh, are there a lot of kids like you coming out of that state and and, and making a name for themselves? Um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely been on the rise since, uh, I mean, since I've been in high school, I think there's been more behind me that have gone on to wrestle and I mean even d1 programs a couple d2 programs and um so on and so forth and I think more and more people from Louisiana getting out and going and wrestling uh, in college just kind of helps spread the just the name of Louisiana wrestling first off and also just helps push more kids to go and went to that next level and just see what they can do. You'd think you'd think that wrestling coaches would just be parked on the bayou waiting for kids to get off. <laughs> and be like you're gonna wrestle, you're gonna wrestle, you're gonna yeah. wrestle. I mean, shit, they're wrestling those things. They can wrestle humans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There, there's definitely been an increase in college coaches that come down to the Louisiana State tournament for recruiting. So that's a that's always good to see. Yeah, and it's got to be good to to just represent your state and and um, yep. see what's going on. Uh, Iowa, are are you? You're not from the Dubuque area, right? No, I'm I'm about an hour away in Davenport. Nice. I've talked to a lot of. Uh, well, I had your buddy on from Grandview. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of folks from there. Um, but what what you know, coming through the youth program in Iowa, you had to probably face a bunch of hammers coming up um yeah. you know coming through youth iowa wrestling what, what's that like and um and, and talk about that a little bit um well, yeah it's it's like you said it's full of, full of good kids I'm, i mean um i wrestled at a club called young guns that was ran by eric jurgens uh who's a national champ at iowa and that that room was stacked full of d1 guys right now even um, a bunch of uni guys iowa guys um it really, at the time, actually, I, I absolutely hated it. I wanted to quit wrestling. I did not like it. Um, but it really, looking back on it now, it, it built my whole career um, from the ground up. So I, I'm very appreciative of getting my, my butt kicked a lot when I was little, um, even though it sucked. But, yeah, I mean, it's tough for sure. Is that, is that um, affiliated with Young Guns PA? Uh, yeah, so it's Jurgens and Jody Strip Matter. They were roommates in college. So then Jody ran one in PA and, and Eric ran one in Iowa. Yeah, Jody's an absolute unbelievable human being. And that guy, yeah. I had him on early, early on on my show, like when I knew like nothing about anything. Mm -hmm. I, I try to get him back on now. Like I've learned so much about him over these shows. But um, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I think you'll see. Uh, over this shoulder here, there's a Young Guns logo right there underneath. Okay. The you see yeah. That yeah, I got it. So yeah, um, he brought up a lot of, uh, they'd have a, a camp in Iowa, but they'd bring up a lot of the PA guys. So like Jason Nolf and all those guys were, were in Iowa for a little bit. So yeah, it was, it was cool. I, I had him on and then 
I don't know, like a week after I have him, had him on, I get a text message from him. He's like, hey, this is Spencer Lee's cell phone number. He's expecting your call. And I'm like, wow, perfect. <laughs> I'm like 20 of these at the time or something, right? I'm like, <laughs> so I text him up and he jumped on. I was like, wow, it's crazy that uh, you guys that are like top wrestlers, like, and you talk to guys and they're just like, I'm just here playing video games. I'm like, wait a second, I'm like a monster. <laughs> I like doing this. All right, cool. But he was pretty cool. So you guys both, um, obviously, you being an Iowa kid, what made you choose uh, Loris? I know there's a lot of obviously really good schools in Iowa. Grandview being one of them, even though it's NA, not even though it's NI, it's NAIA, but it's the top NAIA school in the country, right? And then you've got Loris. And you've obviously Iowa State, Iowa, uh, and then I'm sure there's a ton of others, but uh, what what attracted you to Loris? Um, well, originally I, I went to Augustana College in Illinois um, where Jergens, Eric Jurgens was the coach, head coach there. Um, and actually Loris was, what were we, two and 13? Yeah. Two and like it was, they were two and 13 that year. Um, and I decided I wanted to transfer out um, it was basically the coaching staff, uh, Trevor Kittleson and TJ Miller kind of talking to me um, once I did an enter that portal. Um, kind of just made me feel at home. And I knew a couple of guys up here already. So I kind of just wanted to get out of my comfort zone that way. But when I did it, I was like, man, I just transferred to a, a two and 13 school. I'm like, what, did I, what am I doing? Um, but obviously it ended up working out. That, that same year we ended up um, placing the top five, six. right? Six six in the nation so it went from two and 13 to six in the nation and then it was just a rise from there and and my senior year we ranked number one the whole year so nice see i told you it was these two guys <laughs> <laughs> how about you man coming from louisiana that's not close no not at all it's a pretty hefty drive but uh, actually our head coach at loris uh, tj miller he used to coach down in new orleans at one of my rival high schools so he used to coach against me, actually. Um, and I think my junior year, he got the assistant coaching job uh, up at Loris. So he moved up there. And I think my senior year, um, I decided I wanted to start wrestling and or like start looking at colleges to wrestle. And then he pretty much just recruited me up here. And now how many Louisiana kids has he recruited? Uh, there's probably seven or eight on the team now. <laughs> that happens like in Georgia, Florida coach goes up to Georgia, gets a college program. And <laughs> yep. Florida kids. But uh, they must be doing pretty good if you guys rose to number one. So uh, he's obviously doing a good job there. You know, what's it like in that room? What has what that coaching staff meant to you? How have they, um, how do they make sure you're focused on academics and, and getting your degree? and the philosophy and, and what would you tell young kids out there that are are, are maybe at, at your level um, and are considering college and getting offers from different schools or somebody who's sitting there going, okay, I've got some D1 offers and I've got some D3 offers. Um, what, what should they look at to consider either one? Is it um, Well, honestly, going back to what you said about, you know, the, the wrestling room, our, our room is like, it's crazy how, how close the whole team is like from the outside looking in uh, you wouldn't really recognize it or, or notice it at all. But once you're in that room, you realize it's like, we're all a, a huge family and um, would put it all on the line for, for each person on our team. And our coaches kind of just build a culture rather than a team. It's, it's a, a culture as a whole. Um, they focus really, really hard on academics, making sure that we're keeping up with our classes. Um, but at the same time, they know that we have to hold ourselves accountable too. Like, like they say, they, they can't be there 24 seven for us. Um, and I think that the biggest thing is our whole team from, from 25 to heavyweight and even, even backups, they're so determined to make each other better. Um, so I think that has a, a big, big impact on our success and our rise. Um, but yeah, so I mean, just building that culture and, and kind of keeping that throughout the years has been something that we hold close to us and, and has helped us to become successful today. Yeah, and um, Guy, talk about uh, what you would tell kids about, hey, you're out looking at schools. Um, look at what works for you, not look, don't look at like the division series or what level it is. Um, 
what would you tell kids that just to, to prepare them for for that wrestling room yeah i mean it it's a pretty like like he was saying it's a culture like the whole school of loris just as a community um i think supports all of its sports and uh it just makes you feel welcome as soon as you step on campus and um i mean telling kids coming in basically you know when you step foot in the room it's fighting effort from day one all the way through so that's one of the big things that they they you know lean towards is fighting effort as long as you're giving 100 percent, then uh you're probably going to do your best in every situation and they definitely put a lot of emphasis on 100 percent in the classroom and 100 percent on the mat and 100 percent off the mat so what would you guys tell um so knowing what you know now what would you tell that kid who's a junior right now getting ready to or a senior getting ready to go off to college what's that one thing you would say hey um bring this or do this before you get here or, you know, just to like that one tip you would throw out. Like one guy told me, buy a bicycle, the campus is <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Dubuque is literally like the most hilly place I think I've ever been to in my life. Like there's so sure. many huge hills. But um, I think the one thing I would I would tell someone coming in um, is it's good to be confident, but don't be overly confident. I think that was a big thing for me. Um, I came in like it was like oh I was state champ like I'm on top of the world whatever like no one can touch me um and that was complete I was completely humbled the very first day so like um it's just it's something like that I mean you can come in confident you can come in like you know ready to go and bring bring the fight and effort but don't put yourself above other people just because of your past experiences and your uh your past accolades like you're just another wrestler you know like you said you step on the foot you step on the mat and it's toe to toe and that's that's it it doesn't really matter how good you are and anyone can be beaten so I would say that that's my biggest thing I would I would bring to someone. One thing I think I'd say to someone coming into a college room or just into a college experience in general, um, just be open minded, be open to change. And, you know, I mean, I wouldn't really say adapt, but it's going to be a huge jump going from high school to college, especially if you're playing a sport. And I mean, especially wrestling being just such a tough sport jumping from a high school level uh, practice room up to college wrestling room, college like level, um, you know, and there was kids that have been in the college room for four years now. Um, just, I mean, like I said, be open-minded, be open to change and be willing, like he said, you know, you gotta be humble, be willing to accept defeat and just grow from it. And, and what's it meant to you to be the first four timer? Um, I mean, it's, it's been pretty awesome. Um, just the support from, like I said, the school and the alumni. Um, it's been an, an awesome four years at Loris. And uh, when you're going through this, this senior season that you were having where you're, you're undefeated, as you're getting closer to the end of the season, do you start feeling like more pressure to, to keep the wins up? Um, not at all, really. I was, I mean, every match that I go and wrestle, it's pretty much let it fly. So that's one of the, one of the big things that when I go and wrestle and I'm, I'm just going to let it, let it all out and have fun. That's cool. And, uh, and you both had great senior years. Uh, it's obviously it's difficult to go undefeated. Uh, you did very well as well, Matt. And, um, you know, talk about that that last match where you knew, man, we're seniors, uh, this is it. Um, it. It's heartbreaking, honestly, it really is. Um, I think that for me, it was almost like I had to wake up a couple of days later and be like, wow, like, this is it. You know, like at, at the time it was, it was definitely, I mean, I, I burst into tears my last match um, on the mat. So like, it, it meant a lot to me, but I think the next day when I woke up or that Monday, that following Monday, I was like, we don't even have practice anymore. Like there, there's, this is it. Like, I don't really even know what to do. Um, that you one go, was the big go, thing in my mind. Like a buffet. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I was like, no more. I was like, oh my God, wrestling's over. I was like, no more cutting weight though. I was like, oh. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And, and I know, for you, it, it was a little different, even though you're 
college career is over, in your mind, you knew wrestling was not over. You're still competing at another level. So um, for you, a little bit different or, or the same emotion? Um, not really. I, I wasn't really focused too much on what was beyond nationals. I was kind of focused on that, you know, leading up to regionals. I was focused on regionals and then, you know, whatever the outcome, moving on to nationals from there. And once nationals was over and kind of started focusing on switching over to more of a Greco style since then. Oh, man. So, you know, <clears throat> before we get down uh, any further, what, you know, what is wrestling meant to the both of you? For me, it's, it's been my whole life. I mean, I, I started wrestling when I was three. So um, it's been literally all I've known for my entire life. Uh, I mean, I played other sports. I, I just, I never really, you know, it never really clicked with me. Um, but I, I I know for a fact that I would not be half the person I am today without wrestling. Um, I can I can probably say that it's turned me into the person that I am. Um, and sometimes, you know, wrestling can be, bring you to the highest of highs and to the lowest of lows. And that's what I love about it the most, I think. Um, I'd rather take those low those lowest times and learn from them and apply them to my future life than just be at the highest of highs at all time. So, yeah, and uh, and you have a college degree. Absolutely. <laughs> How about you, guy? Um, I mean, I, I actually started wrestling when I was in uh, I think ninth grade. Um, up until then, I was pretty much a football and baseball player, um, and I played football through high school. But I picked up wrestling probably, I think it was ninth grade of high school. And right off the bat, I think my first year, I went to a, like a kids nationals. Um, and ever since then, it's just kind of, it's been like everything I focus on um, pretty much revolves around wrestling outside of obviously <laughs> school, family, you know. Um, but I have my, my mindset uh, is for the past eight however many years has been wrestling and focused on getting better and I think just as a person it's built me to be a very you know good person and build my discipline a lot and just a strong character and being a leader so I mean wrestling's been uh, a lot for me. You're about to go see the world and wrestle right you're going to try to get on that level get to travel around yeah in your corner yeah you yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> be your coach yeah i mean i i plan on wrestling a couple more years making a couple world teams hopefully and olympics see how that goes and moving on from there to coaching so i'll be rooting for you appreciate it you guys have another fan now <laughs> <laughs> what's um what's one match in your career's uh, that you would want back, whether it was high school, college, off season, on season? Um, for me, it would have been regionals this past year. Um, I was one match away from um, being able to qualify, and I, I actually got taken down uh, with like 15 seconds left in the match and lost. Um, that one, I think, hurt me the most out of any, any loss I've ever had. Um, so if I could take that one back, for sure I would. I would take it back in a heartbeat. I know we still talk about it every day. Like, I would trade places literally anyone that's coming in as a freshman. I would trade it places with anyone for like another year of eligibility. Um, but yeah, so that one for sure. I'd I'd probably have to go with my junior year uh, semifinals of nationals. I'd like to have that one over for sure. <laughs> get get another run at it. Yeah, either another run or another ten seconds. Either way. <laughs> I think I'd be better off. Yeah, uh, I've had some people. I had NATO on. He said he was in on a high crotch with like seconds left to win another national title, and the the bell rang. Yeah. He, God, if I could just get that one, <laughs> like you said, ten more seconds. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So um, let's do this. You guys ready? Yep. All right. Taco pizza or breakfast pizza? Ooh. Breakfast pizza. Breakfast pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Single or double? Single. Not ham not hamburgers. Double eggs or single eggs. <laughs> uh, oh, you don't shoot. So which one? Yeah, double <laughs> eggs. Uh, you're a double cheeseburger. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I thought about right away. I was like, food. Um, I would say for me, single leg. I'll go double leg. Uh, pretty soon it'll be like chest toss or something, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I know your answer here, Scott Jeruz or Dutch or Dutch letters. Scott Jeruz, right? Yep, you Scott Jeruz. <laughs> Oh, yours might be there. I don't. I, that's I like don't a honey bun. I guess. Uh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, the honey bun one. Yeah, perfect. All right, high C or hip toss? High C, hip toss. <laughs> He's a big dude. <laughs> uh, okay, tenderloin or Iowa chop? Oh, tenderloin. I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably say tenderloin too. <laughs> that was a tough one. Fireman's carry or ankle pick? Fireman's carry all day. That's the first Fireman's, one I learned. <laughs> Made right or sloppy Joe? Oh, sloppy, sloppy Joe. Joe's. Made right is supposed to be so popular, but every time I ask an Iowa person, they say sloppy Joe. <laughs> all right, cradle or half? Cradle. Half. <laughs> Fried catfish. Or hot chicken? Oh, I'd say hot chicken. Fried catfish. <laughs> the bayou, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, better, better, uh, better catfish, Iowa or Louisiana? Louisiana. I can attest to that too. Louisiana, yeah. Easily. I've been down there and had it. So, <laughs> um, leg ride tilts or roll through tilts? Hmm. Probably roll through. I'm going to go leg ride. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, man, I wish you guys so much luck with your coaching career and uh, off to uh, to wrestle Greco. Man, I've had a lot of great Greco coaches on here. Dennis Hall, who he was pretty good. And yeah. uh, uh, Coach Betterman, who's got that big uh, school out in Colorado. Mm -hmm angle that just took over up at Oregon State. Uh, I had some, I had some uh, down in Georgia, Terry, Terry, Terry Styles, I think it's called. What? I have it right here. Terry, yeah, Terry Styles. Look at that. I got it right. I remember. See? <laughs> All my memory goes into my gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. I hope you had fun. Um, I look forward to seeing you on the coaching scene and, and seeing you on the world scene. And uh, you guys you guys know how to contact me anytime you want to come back on. Uh, my cell phone number is on my page too. So you guys can either hit me up DMs. My cell phone number is on all my stuff. Um, I know there's a time difference. So if I hear it vibrating at like 2 in the morning, I'm like, <laughs> but, that's all right. You guys take care. Go get some Iowa. No, tenderloin sandwich, right? Absolutely. Right. Yep. You better eat up now before you get on that world scene. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, y'all. See you, man. Thanks so much. And, and if you got any yeah. boys, girls, whatever you think would be good for the show, man, send them my way. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. That was an honor. Have a good yep. one. Have a good day.